Uh, hello, um, welcome back to the podcast. Um, this is the fifth episode, and haven't recorded anything for a while, and that is, uh, the truth. That's just a fact. Um, it is now 1am, and, uh, decided to record something. Um, Camille is here. Hello. I'm, I'm not here by myself. I mean, you're basically just, you know. Always. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, like, co-host, but I oh. would say... Or constant guest. Yeah, <laughs> the constant guest oh. turns into a co-host. Well, so, yeah, if I sound very, um, tired. Disregard. Because it's 1 a.m., but I also always sound tired, so maybe you can been able to tell. Um, gonna talk about a few things today. Um, I'm so, I'm, now I'm sleepy. <laughs> this is fine. Okay. Um, yeah, we we just finished watching Climax. We, we didn't just finish. That was like 30 minutes ago or something. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that. We've watched, obviously, a lot of things since the last podcast, which was Hereditary. Ah, um, yeah, we've watched, yeah. Oh, we've watched a few things. Uh, Mom, Brando! Oh, yeah, so, oh, yeah. I could put that on the list. Um, I was thinking, should we talk spoilers on things? Because we have so many things that maybe we can avoid spoilers so that this is more accessible. Casual? I mean, I, I think a film like Climax doesn't really have spoilers anyway. Right, but that's, you know, if no one knows... Because I'm a type of person who's like, oh no, I don't want to know anything, regardless if, if there's Do no you spoilers. listen to a, a full podcast on a film if you, I... That you haven't seen? But there's going to be yes. spoilers. No, and um, God, I keep shouting him out. Karsten's uh, podcast, they never talk about spoilers, and I think that's why they have such good viewership. Viewership. Audio listeners. What do they talk about then? They talk about um, the film, but they don't say spoilers. They talk about um, just general life things. They're funny guys, so it's just entertaining. Whatever they talk about, really. The um, film. Well, they don't also just talk about the film. They talk about, like, they have segments of their show. They go off of just random topics, like, I don't know. It's weird to talk about. <laughs> Carson will, like, ask the guy, oh, the trivia questions, or, like... Just funny little segments. So it's not just about the film. And it's very silly, very, oh, like, yeah. casual. Um, but, mm-hmm. yeah. You're, 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 the, you're the host. Uh, you do. Well, oh. I don't know if I can, can control a, my... I can bleep it out. Okay. But then I, I'm so lazy with editing. I kind of just don't want to cut out sure. anything anymore. I'll, I'll do my best. Okay, well, I can always bleep it out anyways. Um... So, okay. Okay, well, should we just jump right sure. into it? Uh, do you want to say more about what we're going to talk about later on? Or? I don't know what else we're going to talk about. We'll just have to see. Okay. <laughs> sure. You're informed. I'm not om- omniscient. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> well, where this conversation is going to lead. Yeah, oh, yeah, here. maybe some current news stuff because um, uh, Kami just read something for the Caesars. Which is uh, controversial stuff, so maybe... Oh, yeah, Polanski. Maybe, you know, I think everyone will always have something to talk about with that. Um, so we can talk about that. Nice. Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's probably not a nice thing to do. It is! It's so satisfying. Not to everyone. My dad hates that. Okay, well... I'm My sure dad doesn't listen to the podcast. I'm sure there's some people that like... Fingers... Ne- no, no, knuckle cracking. Okay, knuckle cracking. Oh yeah, I learned how to do this finger snap, <laughs> which she has a huge bruise. But I have on a bruise finger. now because of it. But if you're interested in that, I'll post it. But I mean, now because, she's a douchebag. Because I could say, like that's the finger snap. You wouldn't be able to tell because you're only listening. Well, I can vouch for you. Yeah, it's a special kind of snap. It's just, mean, not just a. It's the price of being a douchebag. Yeah, we're. 
Oh, yeah, you can actually tell the difference between that and... Yeah. Was it worth it? Yes. Okay, let's get into it. Um, climax. Directed by Gaspar Noé. Mm, that guy. That guy? I just didn't know how to say his name. Mm. Gaspar Noé. Gaspar Noé. <laughs> He's half Argentinian, actually. I don't know what's his real name. Oh. I mean, it's it's a fictional name. It's not real. I didn't name. know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why? Because he wanted to sound French for some reason. So, what's his other half? Wait, he's... Well, he's actually half Italian, half Argentinian. Wait, maybe his real name is Gaspar Noé. Maybe I'm just... What? what, what? <laughs> Did you just see his name and you're like, mm, no. Well, Can't it be just seems name. very... F- French, for some reason. Almost ridiculously French. No, he's real. Anyways. His real name is Gaspar Noé. Oh, that's I'm very sorry name. about my... I just have... You were like, I just don't like him. He's a fake. He's a fraud. No, he's not a fraud. He's an actual... Yeah, you know, he. I'm sure he's he's talented filmmaker. I just don't like him. So, well... No, what he's doing. What he's doing with his films. So, uh... Just to preface, the movie is about... Uh, so, yeah, 2018, it's available on Netflix. Okay. That's not what the movie's about. No, it, just... It, it's available. <laughs> sure. In your country, if it is. Yeah. Um, it's, it's about all these dancers. It's set in, like, late 90s, although I don't know if that matters, really. No. Um, for, not even for the music. Not even for the music. The... It's all these young dancers, and they're so contemporary rehe- dancing. They're rehearsing at a school. This is what Letterbox says, um, but it's but like, like abandoned. M- it's not abandoned. It's just like kind of. Well, they've hired up it for to- renting. Yeah. yeah, it's hired. They've hired it all to themselves, um, and chaos ensues. I mean, it happens basically. No, this is in the description. They uh, someone spiked the sangria. Is that what it, it is? Yeah, it was sangria. Um, and it had acid in it, so it's all these dancers who can contort their bodies. Imagine that, but they're on acid. And red lighting. A lot of red. Um, there's a child involved, as in someone has their child in there, so that doesn't uh, So yeah, go if, well uh, if you're not keen on child abuse or whatever. Well, it's not like full-on... No, but child abuse. But, but it can still be, you know, somewhat damaging. Yeah, it's not. It's not a fun time. Ah, uh, the film is a trip. The film in itself. I mean, if you're aware of his directing style, just altogether. I mean, a lot of shots remind me of the. F- I don't know. I maybe stopped at forty minutes in of Enter the Void. Okay, it was too much for me. Yeah, but I mean, there's like yeah, a solid. Maybe 10 minutes? Felt like 10 minutes of just a guy who's on LSD and it's it's pretty images, I must say. It's probably not that accurate, though, to I don't how know. it's really... It actually makes you want to be on LSD and then you see climax and then you, see and you climax. don't want to. Well, I never want to, but... True, but... Anyways, this just yeah. proved my point. And just a lot of, like, um, ceiling shots. Yeah, this is the only shot I've seen. I feel like, well, it's it's him looking at a cityscape. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's another shot where he's, like, uh, lying in in a very dirty uh, bathroom stall. And... Is that what he has in reality? Yeah, and it just... No, like, it's a point... It's a bird eye shot. And it stays like this for, like, 15 minutes, and that's when I stopped. I was like... This is too so much. he really liked birds. That he likes that shot. Yeah, because that was a lot of like this God. Film. God, oh my God! Yeah, there's something about God in climax. So okay, this is not a spoiler. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, it's not it's really not explained. fully explained. And at the beginning, I guess now we can like retrospectively think about the first part. You know of the. Oh, the interview. The interviews, but I honestly can't remember what they were saying. Well, basically, the first part of the film is um, well, it's a shot of an old TV set, basically. Yeah. Isn't it? And then on this old TV set, there's um, 
we can see people being interviewed. Yeah. And we don't see the interviewer. It's kind of us, basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, these dancers are being interviewed to maybe enter this... Uh, school. Da- yeah, school da- dance school. And, and be choreographed. And they're just saying, like, how, you know, passionate they are about dancing or... Kind How of far they're willing to go. Like kissing ass, I would say. Yeah. Just to the choreographer. Or maybe this is like really how they feel. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like this school was mm, the only thing that <laughs> matters to them. It feels very high. But then they didn't really seem that passionate. Like, Well, maybe they realized that it's not that good or that it's maybe. actually fucked up. Because like, um, well, I don't know how much we can talk about now because this is just kind of like, oh, we're just talking about plot now. I don't think anyone will watch this if uh, they hear so much about it. Right, yeah, maybe you should move on. I don't know because we're just describing it. I mean, oh, let's just like get into like opinions. What did you uh, like and what did you dislike? I liked, well, again... I think one of the main reasons I actually wanted to watch the first film I watched or attempted to watch of mm-hmm. Gaspar Noé was Enter the Void because the visuals seemed so cool. Yeah. And that's something he does well. But in terms of content, well, first of all, it's very hard to engage with because you don't know what he's going on about. And, so, and at some point, it's either very gratuitous very mm-hmm. extended, even though it was, a, what, 90 minutes film? Yeah. It felt long at times and very unnecessary. Um, and either very... Well, he's all about sex and violence. Yeah. That's his thing. Or just very intense and hardcore stuff. Well, hardcore... I don't know if it's hardcore, but... In other films, it's hardcore... I guess this one is maybe the most accessible. I mean, it's the only one I've ever finished. It's it. I mean, I didn't really feel like it was. It felt that long. Yeah, I think maybe because it all takes place, uh, in real time. Would you say like, yeah, you just see the. It's moment. one night. Yeah, the moment that they take the drug until the end, basically. Um, I don't know, I, I I wouldn't say I was fully engaged, but I remember everything, so I guess... Yeah, I do. Like, I was well. paying attention to the whole thing. But I was not caring. I wasn't really caring, no, and I, I forgot about some people and what they were doing and where they were off to. Well, because so, sometimes, yeah. th- there's so many characters that sometimes he would um, focus on one duo, and I would be, oh, actually getting invested, invested and then he would, okay, Switch no, we actually another. don't care about them, let's Maybe there's on. something about that. Uh, there's probably people, disregard for people. For this, of course. But I just, um... There's something much deeper. Uh, yeah. I feel. I mean, I, I liked basically the same stuff, just the visuals and the way it tries to disorient you and maybe right. the same way that they're disoriented from being on acid. But it's still not close enough. Like, I felt at parts... I'm trying not to say everything. Um, I don't understand how they're feeling and everything feels like, okay, they're doing that because they're on acid. Are they doing that because they're on acid or are they just bad people to begin with? Because there was things that were right. questionable. But I don't... There's not enough... Uh, I don't know these people. Like, there's not no. enough given, really. So, yeah, it, it, it's a it's an art film. I don't know. It's not really... Yeah, sometimes I don't know if it's just not trying to be... Because that's the thing with him. He's... In interviews, he's just very pretentious. How many interviews have you seen of this man? I don't know, enough like to make me angry. yourself <laughs> through some unnecessary uh, suffering. I don't know. Well, I guess I did try to watch all of his films in the end. Oh, but you never finished any of them. No, Love was... Because Love is a porn. Is Love the one with a threesome? Okay, and you know, the poster know. is like three tongues intertwining. Lovely. And, Wait. Um... And Irreversible. Yeah, no, I, I, I cut it short. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the guy that's with Zoe Kravitz. They're married. Yep. That's how I know. Okay, cool. I don't think... Handsome I, man. Uh, he is a handsome man. But this is strange. 
I don't know. I don't know if I'll watch anything else. I didn't, I never watched anything of Gaspar Noé. I never heard of him until Climax, I think. I didn't know it was him that did Enter the Void, though. And I knew of that just from one shot off of Twitter or something. Right. Because so, Sam... I'm yeah. not inclinated to watch anymore. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think it was the first time I, I, I ever stopped midway through a film. For Enter the Void. Yeah, because I, I just like, no, I'm not going to do that to myself anymore. I, I'm stopping. How long is it? I think it's, I think, I think it's way, it's two hours or more. Okay. But. And it, it just, uh, boredom was making you stop? Like, this was just and, yeah, I mean, unnecessary? It was unnecessary and... There was parts... Well, maybe I was a bit young when I watched it. But some parts were just full-on porn. Okay. Some parts were full-on... Just... It felt very gratuitous. Yeah. At times. And I did, didn't understand what was going on or why I should care for this character. Person. See, I don't like over-gratuitous stuff. It, it didn't feel like for Climax that... Um, Anything was stuck on for too long. Yeah, I guess it, it, the camera Thankfully, is always moving. It was quite f- fast paced. Can you say that? We were moving, you know, from character to character to character. I mean, often um, enough. I think I. I still, I mean. Hmm. It's in hindsight. I liked that film, but to a certain extent. That's okay. I think, yeah. I, li- I liked what it maybe attempted to do, and um, I like the idea of, you know, uh, a ca- basically a cabin. It's just completely isolated with people, and that, you know, they go crazy. Yeah. It's a cool it's idea. It's kind of like a, it's a bit well, macrocosm, but, you know. They're their own little society. Right. It feels very... Oh, there's something kind of dystopian about it. Yeah, because uh, they all they have them is themselves. So who's making the rules? Right. Uh, who's gonna kick who? Lord out? of the Flies. That, right. Yeah, it was a Lord of Flies sort of situation, which I quite like. Yeah. <laughs> but all in all, I gave it a three. So that's three out of five. Cause I don't, I don't. You don't want to be hard. I, I that's kind of how I, what I put for films that I just feel meh about like so what not, do you put on two, uh when it like offends me okay <laughs> like when I start to really dislike something, I think and one and one it's like incredibly offensive shouldn't have been made, oh, I just don't rate it. Yeah, well I put Pinky as one I think or maybe half oh. or even half. You don't have to rate it. It's really just for. No, I don't, I don't know. Don't. It's a. Uh, force of habit at this point but um you gave it a two. Oh, i didn't end up reading it you didn't rate it right it doesn't deserve a rating then no it's not that i mean I, there's a lot of films i don't rate it's just that sometimes five stars is not enough for me oh yeah you're not used to it yeah kinda like that. that's fine uh i mean i was kind of, i mean the first uh, maybe one more criticism I could make is that I wanted more dancing. Oh, yeah. There wasn't a lot of dancing. Uh, hopefully that's not a spoiler. But maybe you should know if you want to watch this and you saw the poster and you're like, oh, cool. And the trailer as well. I remember seeing the trailer and it was just dancing the whole time. It's not all dancing, people. No. A lot. I mean, half of it. Half of it. Maybe. <sighs> I guess I like the format that you know it's it's ba- the the film is basically cut in half. Yeah. Cause like yeah, I'm not gonna say maybe. Yeah, this is this is difficult because you can't really get into it. Well, I th- th- mean even stylistically, th- there's like a real difference, of like there's dialogue in the first part and then the first the second part yeah, has no it's dialogue. Yeah, it's all se- it's it's segmented. And th- that that's something I like about it, I guess. It's definite definitely. <laughs> Mm. Not saying words correctly. Um, some auteur sort of signatures. Yeah. 
very specific stylistic choices that are repeated. They're cool. Yeah. There are a few long takes, which are, you know, always impressive, because mm-hmm. choreography and stuff. Sophia Butel? Butel? Butel. She's um, pretty. Oh, yeah. She's got a great body. <laughs> that sounds really weird, but you see her back a lot, so it's kind of hard oh, not to look she's away. She's so fit. Yeah, and I don't think we really talked much about the other dancers. But um, also the type of dance, because first, it, you know, just watching the dance and going, ah, this is an interesting type of dance, because it's not really... Um, it's very contemporary. It's very contemporary. I, I don't know what it's called, like, the death drop that they do. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it's called. Um <laughs> <laughs> we can speak this can be a short podcast I don't know maybe a 1am podcast episode is not like the best idea in hindsight this is a sleepy one you can fall asleep to this if you want oh. I don't know if this voice can make you fall asleep what if I like start clicking to wake you up or you'll bruise your finger. oh yeah it's already bruised it's strengthened <coughs> If anything. Okay, well, let's move on. Yeah. I'm kind of done with that anyways. Yeah. Uh, watch it if you want, or don't. So, uh, next thing is Rafe Spall, which is an actor um, we who we watched on a, a national theatre play, a one-man show called Death of England. Uh, very good. We watched it on Wednesday. Today is... Saturday morning, but Friday, yeah. so a couple of days, but very impressive man. He talks very fast. First 15 minutes, couldn't understand, but was impressed, very impressed. He's got such stamina and energy. He goes <laughs> to the gym a lot. <laughs> okay, you can't. I don't know how much you can say about that. Oh, but, I can't um, say much about that. Just from his stature, we can tell. Oh, we can tell. Well, okay, that. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bless. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had a bit of a weird uh, crush on Rafe Spall s- since watching the ritual? The, the ritual in, like, 2017. Uh, which is also... We're going to talk uh, just a little bit about it. Um, Good but, film? Good film as well. He, I just think he's quite underrated, especially now seeing that play. Because once again, it's a one man show for like an it's hour and forty minutes, and the amount of lines and it's he speed. talks so fast. So that's a lot of words. He's actually squeezing into one hour forty minutes. It's it's re- he's just really impressive, and it's cool because it's um if you don't know the National uh, Theater, it's like contemporary. So yeah, I mean this one room. I don't know about all the rooms. Oh, okay, I don't know. Well, this play was contemporary, so it was like, I don't know, the sa- sa- stage setting is... Felt like a fashion show. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it was like a runway. It was across... I don't know if we can divulge this information, because this is something, you know, you Oh, you have for. to see it. You have to see it, but, you know, there's, like, props and stuff. It's not like your typical sort of traditional play or anything. Well, you're not, well, you're not in um, a... Theater. It's not a flat, well... It's not flat. There's not a state, a proper stage where you're looking up. No. Oh, and it's down. like slightly interactive. Like yeah. it's very intimate. Uh, he kind of talk. Is it spoiling things? No. Okay. Well, uh, this could. This should. He shares biscuits with you. Okay. What? Well, hey, 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 that's too specific, man. That's a spoiler. <laughs> well, red flag. No, yellow flag. It's a warning. <laughs> Okay. I don't know how to run. Podcasts. And there's music, and then there's like I don't know the mise en scène and the, just the, the general might directing. Not know what mise en scène is. I don't actually know how to say it. Uh, how do you, how do you setting of the frame. There's Whatever. No, frame. no, it's everything that's in the frame. That's what mise en scène is. Everything in the scene. Um, gosh. It is. But what do you call it when it's on stage? Because there's no frame. Everything that's on the stage. Okay. That, which includes the actor, the blocking, the furniture, everything. Huh. 
It's a very difficult word. Well, th it's also weird because it means when we talk about it in film, we're not talking about the camera work. Right. We're well, talking yeah. about whatever's in the frame. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if everyone knows what that is, but... The every... The, yeah. The props. Every, the, all this, the setting out of everything uh, was cool. I don't... I mean... I don't know if you have to be... I think, is it better to be English to understand them? Cause Probably. Because it, it's, it's very about much about the culture yeah, and criticism. Nationalism. Of like, uh, yeah. Um, it's very within the time now for Brexit, probably, because yeah. of people who might have more traditional views. Oh, yeah, it's very political. Yeah, because especially if people have parents with traditional views, I think that's a very relatable thing right now where, you know, the kid is, uh, okay, talking about politics, uh, uh, remain whilst their parents is a leave, yeah. a leaver. That's, I think, quite common. Mm. This is good, though. It's good to talk about it. Because he was... Yeah, like you said, there was definitely people maybe in the crowd. Because they, it was mainly people older than us. Yeah. Let's say that. Yeah. So... On the older spectrum. Yes. <laughs> the spectrum. Yeah. Um, but really cool. There was fire. <laughs> I don't For know. a few seconds. Wait. It, it could be... Fr <laughs> Well, that's a spoil. Well, I, yeah, well, if I just said fire, oh. no, it could be anything. Because it said on the sign outside, like, oh, there's going to be fireworks. And strong fire words. Fire gap works, not fireworks together. Ah, <laughs> damn. Um, <laughs> the, oh, wait, we were actually... Oh, no. <laughs> no, but this stuff at some point just... Yeah, I know. Okay, well... Moving on. Yeah, it's cool. If you're in um, London, London or right if you're now. going to London very soon, because I don't know how long this lasts, uh, check it out. Or just if you're thinking about watching something with Royce Bell, do. Do. Because uh, I think he's quite uh, underrated. I knew, yeah. I've he's not in a lot of stuff. So. I only knew him from like what Black Mirror episode and Cornetto trilogy. Yeah. Maybe no one... Okay, that like, sounds going to be really... <laughs> it's going to sound so mean. Has, no one's ever talked about him on a podcast before. But I'm oh, sure he's done interviews. Yes. Like, this guy is an unknown. He's been in a lot of big things. And he has a... His father's Timothy Spall. Yeah. Uh, who's uh, Peter Pettigrew. Oh, and from Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Yeah. But also in a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, he's so, just a famous English person. Yeah, we so we also watched The Ritual in the same... Day, night, yeah, the same night. I took a nap because <laughs> on that morning I finished two uh, school assignments. So yeah. that's also why we've been gone. Not to like always have excuses, but we watched the boy. The boy. Oh <laughs> my god, I don't want to talk about the boy. Okay. But the second one is coming out. Well, it's already out. Oh, yeah, actually. No, yeah. it's just because we, we went to a trip and we watched yeah. with the boy. Well, the two boys. Uh, yeah, the boy starring Lauren Cohen. Is her last That girl from... Maggie from Walking Dead. Yeah. Um, it's that horror film. It's two horror films. Um, if you're ever going to watch comedies. it, just watch The Boy. Do not watch The Boy 2. Oh, the, the boy Bronze one is... The original one is the only one that matters. It's the only one that matters. It's got low ratings, but give it a chance. It's actually quite... Funny. Uh, funny and and. Uh, I did not expect. Surprising. There's a twist. There's, well, yeah. There's a twist. There's yeah. well. There's something to stick around for. I yeah. would say. I mean, it's short. It's it's effective. But, uh, Watch it with friends. It's way more fun. It's hilarious. Um, and there's a ton of fan fiction or like yeah YouTube edits. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah, but not to spoil anything because oh yeah, don't watch them yeah. before you watch. Them. Not <laughs> do not go because so many people were gonna jump onto the fan <laughs> fiction of the boy. Uh, watch the film. First. Watch the film first, guys. If you're a true film critic, <laughs> watch the boy one. So yeah, we've been gone because uh, we did a trip. Because of essays, it's uh, it was our reading week, so that is that. Um, but, but yeah, before that, we did watch 
Marlon Brando. Oh yeah, because the BFI was doing like um, sort of a Marlon Brando. Elia Kazan. Oh yeah, Elia. Oh yeah, yeah. Elia, Elia Kazan. Yeah, but a bunch of his films. So like East of Eden as well. Yeah. Um, another film with Warren Beatty, I think. I can't and remember. The, and the waterfront, streetcar number seven. I forgot we watched on the waterfront because it doesn't stick in my memory. But for some reason, it's everyone's favorite. I like I like streetcar name desire. Me too. A lot more. Because he's, because he's hot. Okay. <laughs> Straight no. to the point. No, well, but you're not wrong. Vivian Lee. He's also probably temperature wise hot because he's always probably. Sweating. It's the south. Vivian is always in the South. She's always in the South, but she's better in this South, I would say. Actually. Yeah, I mean, the South just gives her Oscars as well. Yeah, yeah. So, 50s films. 50s films. With Marlon Brando and just... Oh, being pretty. Being, yeah. I, I mean, it's the image that everyone probably has seen of Marlon Brando with the shirt and the sweat and... And the beer. And the beer. And Stella! And Stella. It was good. Oh, uh, it's solid. Yeah. If you ever want to watch a Marlon Brando film, just watch that one. And... Well, there's other stuff. No, I think just watch that one. <laughs> I think that's all you really... Uh, or a good start. It's a good start. I think start. that's a really yeah. nice... I mean, on the waterfront is good. <laughs> no, it is good. It's just it is good. Mm, why he the did. silence? <laughs> no, it is. I liked it. Just not as much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I also just didn't um, understand it as much as Streetcar, where... Uh, yeah. Streetcar is uh, good. Uh, good. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've... <laughs> talking for 30, 30 minutes. Oh, uh, was there anything else? I don't know. We didn't really talk about the ritual that much. Do you want to talk? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, just a little bit, just because I feel like oh, more yeah. people need to watch it. Now it's like, um, well, after, especially during like a, you know, a podcast on Midsummer. Yeah. There's a lot of similarities. Ah, uh, yeah, because it's Sweden and apparently shit happens in Sweden. And just trees and yeah and rituals weird yeah so the ritual is about like sects um sects cults okay, okay. a is sect that, yeah a sect yeah 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 is that how you say it yeah okay I just thought you said sex 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 well no actually there's no other okay thing. so the <laughs> it's about um some lads that go on yeah weirdly enough there's no sex in it there's no sex. Um, they, the they go on, uh, some, uh, you know, English lads go on holiday and I don't know if I can divulge like the beginning. Oh yeah. No. I don't know. I think it's better not to cause yeah. it, it comes off as a surprise. Yeah. Um, they go to a, a holiday to Sweden to go hiking and they take a shortcut through the forest and guess what? Shit, Shit happens, happens because of that. Um, I think it's cool. I think it does yeah, some cool things. I mean, it, it, it look uh, it, feels like it's on a low budget but it, it it's still very effective in sound design yeah i don't feel like it's cheap no it's not a cheap I think it's, film and even though we do see like all the the threat mm-hmm. i'll call it like that it's very well done it's really cool it's, i forget how cool it is it's no um it's very effective it's very cathartic yeah there's there's there's, like, ideas that are very similar to Midsummer. Midsummer. But it think. came first, so well, chew on that. Midsummer's still cool. Midsummer's <laughs> still cool. They can both exist. Yeah. It's fine. It looks like, you know... The same. ritual's, like, the lad holiday. Midsummer's, like, for the woman. <laughs> oh, I guess, I guess yeah, there's no women in the ritual. No. There's, like... No, the, 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 let, those are not, not women. Anyways, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just pretty cool. The music... I don't know if anyone will notice. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminded of some Joker. <laughs> it was exactly like the Joker. It's a cello. Like play, playing. Yeah, I mean it is just a cello though. But um, does it still make you want to go hiking in Sweden? No. 
Well, actually, it depends. I, ca- I kind of still want to go. Yeah, I want to go to Sweden. I want to. Yeah, I want to go to Sweden, but I want to be safe. Yeah, I wouldn't go into the forest. Probably. I don't think I would be dumb as well. Yeah. So, to give some balance, you know, negatives. Um, they still don't have uh, realistic logic at times. Because it's a and horror. There's always unnecessary panic, for like. And characters. dumb decisions. Yeah, so there. Even though you that. don't know how you're gonna react, still, lads. Lads, just blame it on them being lads. Um, Rafe Spall was good in it. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't say that much. It's good. But he was good. He smokes a lot. Looks cool doing it. I mean, smoking does look cool. I'm not supporting it. Oh. I just feel like this is a platform. Cinematic purposes, it's always cool. Yeah. Uh, have a character that either smokes or has a helmet and it looks cool. A helmet. Just what, like the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian. <laughs> God. This look this sounds terrifying. I'm sorry. Is that mine or yes, yours? Yes, yours is just. I'm sound. sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. I can't do anything about it's it. It's very loud. If you heard that, because I don't know if I'm gonna cut things out. I'm really lazy now. Uh, it's like a t- smell dispenser. <laughs> Leave it at that. Uh, anything else? To talk about just general life uh, things. Then we don't have to. Oh, wait. Avoid spoilers. Went to see Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Oh, yeah. Oh. He's still thinking about it. Oh, my God. It took me a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think it should have been nominated for Best Picture, Best Foreign Picture, maybe. Yeah. I'm a bit surprised that it wasn't. In the list, it's it's a it's a gorgeous film. It it had been a while since it had been touched like that. Yeah. By a f- oh yeah, it had been a while. I don't know. Well, transition to uh, it's the Caesars right now in France. Okay. Caesars is like, <laughs> um, basically, uh, yeah, the French Oscars. We'll say that. Yeah, sure. You win a. Statue. Everything's always related back to America. <laughs> well, just to make it easy. Yeah. It's a French ceremony. It's not like uh, Cannes, because it's not a festival. No. And basically what <laughs> happened is that Polanski, as France does, because France likes Polanski, because he's a citizen there. Mm. And he was nominated, well, his film, which is called, oh God, I don't know the the English title. I accuse maybe, in French is accuse about. Okay. Uh, it's basically but basically based off it's based off. A book written by Emile Zola, which is called, the same, which is the same title, mm-hmm. and it's about this very controversial thing that happened in the nineteenth century, about anti-Semitism, basically. Okay. Um. Yeah. And it's and it's an amazing book, and I'm sure the film is good. Wait, before going forward, maybe not everyone knows who Polanski is. Roman Polanski, um, Polish director. And what he Polish. did. Is he Polish? Yeah, he's probably Polish. I, think. I actually don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, first known as, like, uh, the husband, of late Sharon husband Tate. of Sharon Tate, who's, you know, was, well, maybe you don't, murdered and... She was pregnant, murdered yeah. in the seventies during uh, the whole Marlon, uh, Marlon, Marilyn, Marilyn, Charlie, M- Charlie Manson. Manson. <laughs> that was Manson. a weird mix. Uh, yeah, which was not really depicted in accuracy in the Tarantino film, but that's not the point. That might be, you know, a lot of people have seen that film. So but yeah, yeah. If you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Sharon Tate, Polanski. Wait, Polanski's in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's Polanski. Okay, so yeah, that's... Polanski's in it. And uh, a couple years after this very traumatic experience, doesn't, I mean, still doesn't matter because he still raped a little girl. Well, a little young girl. Yes. 
and he was, um, yeah, he, he pleaded guilty, pleaded, is that, yeah, yeah. he pleaded guilty, um, he did, I don't know if he did jail, but he paid some, anyways, He's considered guilty, money. and I mean everywhere in the world. Well, at least in the state, he does not. He is not allowed to foot to step to step foot into into the states. The states, because otherwise he'll be put in jail. Yeah. But in Poland, Switzerland, and France, he's a free man, which is weird because, yeah. anyways, blah blah. Yeah. And he's still allowed to make films, um, and so he made this film, Jacuzzi. And it got nominated 12 times at the Caesars. and God. 12 times. And he... Including Best Picture. But he didn't win Best Picture. But he won Best Which Director. Which I feel like is even worse. Because it's him. It's, it's not him. the film. If, at least if it's the film, you can separate yeah. art, maybe. But... And, it's almost uh, Yeah, people are very... You know, because... They're getting mad, of course, as they should. I think it's really good, though, how vo- uh, vocal. Yeah, they I are. mean, people outside of like the, the venue, there were yeah, p- protests. Uh-huh. Uh huh. People, uh, French people, as they do, getting very mad. Uh, but this is rightfully so. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And even people uh, within, uh, the audience like Adele and Elle. Um, Girl Actress from of Portrait, yeah, of a Lady on Fire. She walked out, and saying like, "Oh, it's a shame. It's it's no, it's disgraceful. It's ridiculous." Yeah, and yeah, and, and many uh, people walked out. Yeah, many people. After yeah, her. followed her. I think that's really good. I don't know if that would happen at like the Oscars if it was someone. Maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. I'm not sure, cause now. But at the same time, I don't know who was uh, part of that. Polanski is not nominated there. Nope. Thing is, it's uh, I don't know, because this film seems good. <laughs> it's that I'm so mad about these But there's plenty of good things. films out there. I know, but I've never like, seen any Polanski. Maybe I just never will, because I I don't want to. Thing is, it's better it's, that it's, way. It's really annoying. To like his films. Well, the pianist with. Adrian Brody is so good. Right. I forgot. Thankfully, I've never seen it. Or even Oliver Twist. The Wait, Oliver Twist. Well, there's multiple versions. Yeah, but which one? He did I've not. Seen quite he a did few. not do the '60s version with the songs. He did a. You don't know what version I've seen. But uh, yeah, no. But he did not do the but musical, I don't know. which is the cherished no, version. No, no, like I've seen a recent one. Like, I. This is the one I've seen. Okay. The 2005 version. That's I have the DVD. And I've seen, yeah, Macbeth. But this one was, like, really dark. I, I didn't like it. I would always go back to the, the 50s oh, one. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I've seen a Polanski film. I didn't know, though. Oh, there you go. It was a child. It's innocent. But it's funny to see, like, on Twitter comments, well, you know, people are completely divided. Ah, oh, you know, you should... You should look at him as a director, not as a... Well, who cares? You can't. I don't think you physically can. I don't know. It's it's still a debate going on. I think it's more that you don't keep supporting the director. You don't keep supporting the artist. You can still watch their old stuff. Obviously, you can. You're allowed. Whether you like it or not, that's you. That's subjective. Um, it might taint it. Oh, it does. Yeah. It certainly does. It's, uh, it's, it's very... It's just very... Makes you mad that people... Well, it just makes you realize that... Fuck. Very shitty and fucked up people can make beautiful things. Hmm. Why is that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very annoying. Because it's almost like you have to admit that... Yes, it's great. But at the same time, these people deserve to be in jail. Yeah. It goes to, yeah, it shows that it, mm, there's no such thing as karma. No, it's, it's just... Uh, 
everything's random or you make your way or I don't know how he's gotten so lucky, but he has. I don't know. Do you think the government in France will actually take any initiative with this? So, no, sorry, no, definitely not. Because then Adele said something like the the Me Too movement in France was truly, well, not well accomplished. That it's, uh, the industry in, in France is still very uh, based off a patriarchal, patriarchal? Yeah. Uh, model. And uh, yeah, it's still disregarding victims and supporting people like him. Okay. In some regard. Well. So, yeah, that's a, it's a hot topic right now. I mean, the protest footage looked pretty intense. Yeah. I thought it, they were burning a fire. <laughs> it was just a flare. But I wouldn't be surprised. If there was a fire, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, do you have anything else to talk about to, like, end it on a maybe higher note? Oh, come to daddy? Come to daddy? Do you want to talk about Oh, that? sure. Briefly. I mean, I'll talk about Elijah Wood however long <laughs> you want me to. Um, we watched, yeah, like, <laughs> we watched Come to Daddy, which is directed by Ant Thompson. I think that's his name. He's a Kiwi. He's a New Zealander. I don't know if Kiwi's derogatory. I don't think it is. It's a New Zealander. Um, it stars Elijah Wood as this, like, hipster man-child uh, guy who visits his estranged father in the wilderness in this beautiful home. I think it's in California. Is it in California? Yeah. I think uh, we see a plate. Yeah. It was filmed in Canada. Uh. <laughs> but it yeah it, it looks gorgeous um but it's you know apparent that it's weird right at the beginning like sets the tone i don't know of like a f- funny horror film if you it's call a it lot that. of fun it, it's a lot of fun yeah, uh, yeah visuals are cool yeah i mean i think it was just quite entertaining and i like uh films that are doing things that are different. Yeah. So I got invested. Yeah. Check it out if you can. It. I don't think it has much of a release. Like I think it might have come out last year even. Um, Elijah Wood was doing some interviews a few weeks ago or a month ago. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's it's cool. He also has a podcast, if you're interested in podcasts. It's uh, Under the Shutter uh, movie podcast. Uh, Shutter is like this, it's like Amazon Prime, but just for horror films. And it's pretty cool. I don't have it. But <laughs> they, sound, they make it sound really cool on all the advertisements they do on the podcast. So, yeah, check it out if you want. Podcast cool. Podcast cool. <laughs> Do you have any recommendations? Maybe that would be also nice. Mm. Yeah, you could talk about your Black Eyed Peas nostalgia oh. trip. <laughs> I don't know if that's recommendations. Well, I think it was a nice recommendation for me. I like went back and listened to some myself. Oh, it's just I was getting back into like... I was having a moment of listening to Shark Tale soundtrack. And it just brought me back to 2000 music. And I was like, ah... I yeah. fell into this hole. Well, nice, a nice hole. A nice. Well, it's just I forgot how many songs they did, and I mean maybe songs I hadn't listened to in years, and I don't know. Still knew the lyrics. Yeah, it's amazing. And oh, just, how two thousands wholesome decade. Just uh, you could. It was it was pop. It Sing was along like um, music everyone knew. It was kind of rap at times or even hip hop. A little bit electronic. Yeah, it was a little bit of everything. Very, 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 very 
quite, R&B quite as well. Quite varied. <laughs> yeah. It was. Um, yeah. The recommendations. Recommend- <laughs> recommendations. What have, what have I been doing? Go to somewhere where it's snowing. We had a bit of snow. That's my transition to say that it snowed for like... Uh, f- five minutes or something. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it's it was more like uh, it was more like really cold rain. Yeah, cold rain. It that was there were snowflakes, but they turned into water by the mm-hmm. time they reached the ground. Sounds so pessimistic, <laughs> but that's what happened. It was still very exciting though, cause I never see snow. So yeah, take what you get. Take what you can get. Get you can't wait. Why am I having like a joker lying <laughs> in my head? You just, just thinking terrible. Oh, I would hope that you don't start thinking the way Joker does. Oh God, no! Kind of pathetic. If you ask me, okay, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> it depends which Joker, doesn't it? Oh, I'm talking about the the, the Joker Joker film. Okay. Fuck yeah. yeah. Yes. We don't we don't need to talk no, about that because there are people that legitimately like that film. Yeah, a lot, okay. a lot of people. Um, don't have anything. I don't know. I I've recommended the podcast. <laughs> that's my recommendation. Cause I don't know. That's all I've been listening. What I don't listen to um oh, music a lot lately. What have I? Oh yeah. What have I been listening to lately? Um. Very well, basic. I don't know. I'm just being very nostalgic. Just listening to long ass music, well, track of just um the Doors. The Doors. That's not basic. Oh. Why is that basic? Because it's just. You want to see basic? You can look at my Spotify. No, in the sense that it's uh well, it's basic in the sense that you know people trying to look like oh um. I'm unique. I listen to 70 songs. That's more like a hipster thing rather oh. than a basic thing. But hipsters are... They're basic in the sense that there's many of them now. Yeah. But the idea is like... I guess I'm not really yeah. unique. I guess I was always into the doors. That's what they all say. Well... <laughs> sh- I don't know. My dad always used to make me listen to it as a kid. Yeah. Anyways, just very, you know, listening to Riders on the Storm is always cool. Because yeah. it's long. <laughs> I like long. <laughs> oh God, it's not that. But yeah, either that or... Uh, ah, it's just it's a very cool song by... Um, God, what's their name? Wait. Uh, I only know the title. Uh, do I actually... This is, it's 2 a.m. <laughs> well, pardon me. You said you were up for doing this. I was. I said, oh yeah, Steve Miller Band. Fly Like an Eagle. Greatest Heads between 1974 and 1978. Oh yeah, you do play that. Fly Like an Eagle. Such a good, it's just, uh, such a good song. I just want to go on a road trip in a convertible and just, uh, well we can go to s- <laughs> the mountains. And I, I want the sea. I know. Oh, I guess I've been re-listening to Sid Matters, but only to two songs. Because <gasps> oh. it was from the Life is Strange video game. That's it. Right. Yeah. Sid Matters is very... 2000... I just think it's French. They're French. I didn't know that. I did not know either. It's like this acoustic... The way I found out is like I just wanted to watch an acoustic version of uh, To All of You. And then it, they were just speaking French, and I was like, is this what's happening? <laughs> and then they just go right into the song, and it is... They don't have an accent. They don't have an accent. I honestly thought they were, yeah, American. It reminds me of Phoenix. Do you remember Phoenix? Maybe. Mr. Mania. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's French. He's French. Well, they're French. <laughs> I love them. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. We can't actually understand what he's saying. Mm-hmm. What does mm-hmm. Listomania mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. This was like a phase of music as well. 
like passion pit, you know, just take a walk or group love. This was all like, this was good. All the same time or even imagine dragons at the beginning. They were, you know, perks of being a wallflower <laughs> with the slapping. Oh, very indie. Oh, are you not listening to Max Richter indie. anymore? Who? Max. Max? Richter? 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 Oh, no, because I'm not doing essays. Oh, uh, well, I'm still... I was just really listening to a specific music of, like, either Ratatouille... <laughs> Oh, yep. Or um, uh, or the leftovers, which is a TV show. Yep. That was on HBO. Uh, was it? Yeah, HBO because HBO is quality stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I want to get into the leftovers. Yeah, I'm cry. it's fine. The music is good. Max Richter, um, who also has done music for a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I don't have much to say. But he's cool. He's a composer. Like, people might expect, like, oh, cool. It's Max Richter guy. It must be, like, pop songs. And it's just, like, uh, really no, sad music. No, people love him. But don't, I, I would assume maybe the general, you know, public don't know who he is. Some people don't well, pay attention to composer names. Which it's is just very funny because w- when you look at the comments, people are like, oh, making the salad makes... And listening to this makes me feel like I'm on a mission or like something spiritual. Oh. It just, oh, uh, well, people are funny in the comments, but um, yeah, they love it. Well, they're the ones searching out for him, though. It just, I think, wait, I think one of his song, I don't know if he made it for it, but in one of his album, when songs were used for um, Prometheus, the film. Yeah. Which Probably. Is, I do love Prometheus. I'm maybe gonna rewatch it because Rafe Spall is in it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> True! And, the small, and also Logan Marshall. Yes! What's his face? American Tom Hardy. American Tom Hardy, upgrade himself. And. <laughs> That's him. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good movie. <laughs> oh no, Prometheus is like a personal favorite. Yeah. I mean, Michael Fassbender. The only, yeah. The only love of my life. <laughs> What's his name? David? Yeah, David. Ah! Oh, Lee yeah. Pace! Lee Pace. No, he's not in it. Just yeah. thinking about Lee oh, Pace. Oh, just general. This has been the mood for the past few days. Yep. Yeah. Lee Pace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you know, you know. If you don't, it's fine. Just search him up. He's still... It, it'll just brighten the day. What if this is, like, someone who's just not into guys? Still. Still. Just see. Just uh, marvel, you know. Appreciate. I can appreciate a woman's beauty. I'm sure you can appreciate. As a heterosexual woman, I can appreciate a woman's beauty. So I'm of sure course. that I, I look, anyone else I look Zendaya can. up, and I'm like, oh, jeez. Zendaya, Zendaya, Zendaya. <laughs> like, fuck. Zendaya, yeah. Zendaya. Definitely. Or Hunter Schaefer. That was my watch. Yeah, which means it's 2.08 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, gonna wrap this up. Yep. We're good. Um uh, leave uh, your comments down below about anything you want really I still don't know how to do this at all you're listening to so many podcasts how do they end it I don't know they're just so confident and they're always laughing <laughs> <laughs> they're always Bye-bye. like in the middle of another conversation somehow I don't know True. That's why I do like Karsten's podcast because it sounds like the most natural that I've heard and like has awkward mm-hmm. and silences. Okay, well, um, hopefully we'll do one of these again. Well, more regularly because we have time now. Won't say why, but we have time. And um... <laughs> <That's> so mysterious. 
Um, we might be making a film. I don't know if I can divulge that. Divulge? Talk about yeah. that? Because that might be something nice to talk about in the next few weeks. So, yeah, if you saw any of the things that we talked about, talk about it down below. If you have some suggestions, suggest. and um, Yeah, any thoughts? Uh, thanks for listening, and goodbye. Bye. <laughs>